Today we're looking at the Cowboy defense, but before we do that, I want to look at one of my favorite information pages on sportsbettingdime.com. Today we're talking about the Super Bowl 54 Championship Tracker. It's a page that's updated on the regular and it shows every team's chance of winning the Super Bowl this year. It shows you current odds, but you can also look at odds from the previous weeks. You can even break it down by division and conference. I think it's fun to categorize the odds by the NFC East to see how dominant the Cowboys have been. I'll leave a link in the description. You can play around with it, isolate your team, put your team against other teams and see how they did this year. That's sportsbettingdime.com. Give it a shot. I tell you what, if our defense continue to play how they played last week versus the Eagles and our offense continues to, you know, continue to improve and go on the course they've been going, hey man, we'll be we'll be in that Super Bowl conversation again in no time. But y'all know how I feel about this whole thing. Got a handful of plays I wanted to show y'all today. Two, four, six, seven plays I wanted to show y'all today. Uh we're gonna run it in chronological order. So let's run it for the cardio, man. Let's just see, man. Uh, we finally got turnovers this week, man. We finally got turnovers. Jalen Smith um, uh, got the uh, got the uh, fumble here on Dallas Goddard. That's just that's just technique right there, man. Just take a look at Jalen's tackle technique right there. Put your put your head on the ball. That's what they talking about, man. Belt and ball. That's old middle school tackle technique. And he did it, man. Belt ball wrapped up and the ball just came out, man. And and, and you know, man. Sometimes you got to go back to fundamentals. Sometimes you got to go back to to doing small things right there have you know big impacts you know what i mean like if you just try to knock people out maybe you won't get the ball out but hey you <laughs> do the regular stuff boy this d law sack is a thing of beauty and we all know this technique we've seen it before but i'll break it down every single time man i'll break it down every single time because it's lovely it's beautiful it's it's just it's just done properly and um let's uh boom here we go all right so it it, it it starts from the ground up, you know. You know, people, people, they, they'll, they'll, they'll see the hop, skip, they'll see all the extra stuff, but it's a couple steps that goes into it before that. You kind of want to line up wide, like this whole, this whole thing is about manipulating space, space and energy, right? We want to see see D Law line up with a little bit of distance, not too too far, but not too too close. We want to line up here with a little distance so we can be able to work inside to get Lane Johnson to work back inside with us, right? If we start inside, then work outside, then Lane would be able to adjust to it. Or if we're outside and we stay outside, he's athletic enough to get there. But if we're outside and we work inside just to get back outside, right? It's kind of like manipulating leverage kind of sort of. So D-Law got to line up here. And if you take a look at this heavy step to the inside, boom, this heavy step is important. And if you take a look, when D-Law steps with that left foot, you see Lane Johnson, he, he adjusts. He does what D-Law wants him to do. He's going to step with this foot. You're going to see Lane adjust, boom, and get back inside. And that's what I mean by manipulate space and leverage. We need to do what we need to do to get Lane inside just so we can work back outside right so now that we've gotten to this point to this point of the rush we've got to defeat lane's outside hand that'll be his right hand so you're gonna see d law cross over the top see him net you see him there we're gonna see him cross over the top we're gonna see him swipe with the left and shh, boy you dead as fried chicken at that point <laughs> boy you dead as deep fried eagle at that point let's just watch it one more time in fast motion without stopping it it's really a thing of beauty man it's really poetry in motion the funny thing about it d law wasn't even rushing like this coming out of boise state he was an edge rusher like a like a he rushed with more speed he was more of a right defensive end and um he didn't really rush with too too much technique he just rushed with athleticism he had to get big and strong and then learn how to use his hands but hey man the final product worked out and uh he was tired of y'all saying that he was taking money from us some else D-Law is really good at, he's good at switching his looks up. If you take a look at Lane Johnson, Lane really started guessing right here, right? In this in this play in particular, I know he guessed because D-Law really didn't give him a move to indicate that he was trying to go outside or anything. Let me just play it and then we'll just come back and look at it. D-Law lined up outside, but he really didn't give a move to, to, to really show where he was going. Now, Lane could have been a little more patient. His zone step probably could have been a little more upfield to give him Himself a little more space to navigate but if you're lane johnson and if you're stepping to the right and d law going left 
you got a problem. You either going to hold or your running back is going to get hit in the backfield just like he did. What I mean by get a feel, let's see if anybody else did it. Uh, nobody else really did it. But take a look at, uh, okay, cool. Take a look at 79 right here. Take a look at their right guard. See how he really didn't commit the one side. He took a step, but he didn't commit there. His, his motion was more so going forward, regardless of what his feet was doing. His motion was more so going forward. You look at Lane Johnson, his hips got turned outside. Right, Lane went from went from flat square to hips turned outside, and if your hips are turned outside because you guessing, hey man, look, <laughs> D. Law is gonna get inside on you, bro. He's gonna uh, beat you with athleticism. So I just like the fact that D. Law beat him with uh, with the hand technique, and then he just beat him with pure burst cross in his face. I think that's fantastic. Everybody in the comment section right now, hashtag Free J. Lou. Um, shouts out to Anthony Brown, man. I mean, he's a cool cat. Uh, he gives us solid minutes. He's played on this on this team, man. But I just think Jordan Lewis is 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 just a a better football player, man. When he's on the field, I think he has a better uh, a better idea for coverage. He has a better idea of how to like get his hands on the ball. Of you know, just just different things, man. But like when you watch him blitz here, man, look at his closing burst. Right, he's gonna be real casual disguising this thing. I like it. I like it, but man, look at the burst Jordan Lewis gets on his damn blitz, man. That is ridiculous. That's what you want. That's what you want, J. Lou. Come on, man. Why? Why is this dude on the bench? People like to think that I have no problems with coaching at all. Hey, man. Here's a. a here's one of my coaching. One of my coaching critiques. Jordan Lewis should be on the field a lot more. He should be. And this ain't even me hating on Anthony Brown, dog. But look at this closing speed, bro. Like that. It, that look, 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 look at this. You remember like Orlando Scandrick was just really good at timing blitzes um, when he was playing. When he was playing nickel, um, he would just time those blitzes really, really good, and he'll just get that that last second burst in and just go get it. I don't even know if Jordan timed this really well because at the ball snap, he like five yards off the line of scrimmage, but the burst helped made up for it. You know what I mean? That's just athleticism. That's just getting there. That's one, two. That's ass whoop. Um, I'm after this bye week, man. Look, I hope AB get healthy and all that because we may need him. But I hope we need him as a depth guy. <laughs> I want Jay Lou to be my starter moving forward, man. Look at that. <clears throat> moving on. You know it's funny how emotion works. If you go back and look at my Andre Dillard uh, college um, uh, draft assessment of him, right when he was in Washington State. My assessment of him was I was like, man, he lets people get too close. He needs to work on his hand placement and uh, he don't need to let guys get inside on him. Right. Um, the Eagles offensive line coach, who's who, who's who's supposed to be this good off this good offensive line coach or whatever. He came out. He made this video about Andre Diller after they drafted him, whatever, said all good things about him. And he said that Andre Diller had good, good hand placement and all that. And if you go to my Andre Diller film session, you see in the comment section, you see Eagles fans. Hayden saying, oh, Vach, did you see the coach say Andre Dilla have good hands? You said Andre Dilla had bad hand placement. You must be hating, Vach. Okay, cool. Let's see what let's see what what Robert Quinn did to Mr. Good Hand Placement. Uh, 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 what's his face, Andre Dillard? Let's see what the hell Robert Quinn did. Let's see, let's see, let's see, Mr. Good Hand Placement here. Now, I know I sound petty. I know I sound petty, but the Eagles deserve. They deserve all of this. Listen, man, if you're gonna let Robert Quinn get inside on you. That's your problem. That's your problem. Now, if we was talking about look, it, this same exact problem, this is what I was saying. Andre Dillard lets guys get close to him. He, it, I say all this in the film, so I promise I'm not bragging on me. He lets guys get close to him, and he needs to work on getting his hands inside first. That's what I said. And Robert Quinn been kicking his ass to the outside all day. And to be fair, Andre Dilla is a fantastic athlete. He's a fantastic, uh, he has fantastic movement as offensive line, uh, uh, lineman, uh, left tackle. But boy, when Robert Quinn been beating you to the outside all day, then he switches it up, boom, gets inside, gets those hands in on that bull rush and takes you all the way to Carson Wentz. You deserve it, Eagles fans. You deserve it. I ain't even hating on Andre Dillard, and I hate that I got to be evil with Andre Dillard right now. But Eagles fans, this is what you get. This is what you get for, for, for going on my video talking crazy when this is the exact problem I said Andre Dillard had coming out in the draft. Y'all going to learn today, though. Y'all going to learn to quit messing with Vach Lombardi. Good job, Robert Quinn. Do it again.
Robert Quinn going to beat the hell out of Andre Diller here again. But if Carson Wentz, boy, look, if Carson didn't have big, strong hands, this would have been another strip sack. This would have been a whole nother turnover, man. Look at Robert Quinn coming off the ball, beating the hell out of Andre Diller. Getting his hands on the football. If you uh, if you look at the broadcast view, NBC actually zoomed down on this real nice. So, shots out to them. I'm just not going to show it because, you know, Illuminati rules. But um, Robert Quinn actually smacks this football just that uh, Carson Wentz has such a grip on it that he just didn't come up off of it. He just didn't. Uh, he just didn't. He just didn't let it go or whatever. But let's see how we set up. Uh, how we set up Andre Dillon. He didn't really set him up. You know, what I like about Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn ain't doing all the technical, nuanced stuff that uh, that uh, D Law doing. D Law is, you know, he's doing the technique, the hand fighting, all the nuance and intricate things. You know, Robert Quinn just kind of lining up and being more explosive than people. <laughs> he's just lining up and exploding past people. You know what I mean? We didn't get a sack there, but I thought it was very close. And it's the last play, man. We got Xavier Woods just making a fantastic read on Carson Wentz right here. Xavier Woods right there. Let's just run this play and just check it out, man. <clears throat> Maybe he read that that double movement. I was looking at it for a while, man. I was looking at it and and it just looks like a like a damn good heads up football play. It looks like a like a really good football play. And I don't I don't even think Carson Wentz saw him. I think Carson Wentz was trying to throw with a little bit of anticipation. Uh, and shouts out to Byron Jones, man, because they wasn't throwing on, on, on his side all day. But uh, I think Carson Wentz was anticipating this double move, but he didn't see how deep Xavier Woods got. But Xavier Woods kind of baited him a little bit, right? Look at Xavier Woods pointing his hips, pointing his shoulders, giving that image that he's looking towards this side, giving the illusion that he may, you know, try to help out over here. And um, we looking at this at this double move here. Carson Wentz is probably staring this man down right now. Um like his eyes may be in a different place in terms of looking off safeties or whatever, but we know that he wants to go here because that's where his, you know, where his double move is, right? But man, Xavier Woods just man, he just came down and just made a hell of a play, man. Hell of a play. Getting that interception and just I don't I mean, that wasn't the last the last big thing that happened to us on 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 defense or whatever, but it definitely was a dagger. And look at twenty six; he don't even want to be here. <laughs> Who is this, Miles Sanders? Miles Sanders don't even want to be here. He ready to go home, man. But uh, shouts out to um, Xavier Woods for putting that dagger into these people, man. I'm gonna do another film session on on Jordan Lewis and his coverage ability. I, I'm I'm also gonna put Sean Lee in that video because Cowboy fans wanted to to uh, trade Jordan Lewis and and um and Sean Lee in the offseason. And you know, man, when you when you got guys, don't get rid of them just just because you got guys to get rid of. Hold on to them, man, because you may need these people. Like people get hurt, and it's a long season. And, Hey man, both those guys step up and, and uh play pivotal role, pivotal roles for you uh this week. So anyway, um once again, man, shouts out to the sponsor of this video, Sports Betting Dime. You can go in my description box and check out their Super Bowl 54 championship tracker. Get you all the updates on that. It's gonna update week by week. Um, every time something happens in the league in terms of wins and losses, it's gonna change, man. They always have good information. I love to go to them. Sports betting dime. Check out that link in my description. Y'all can follow me on Twitter, V O C H L O M B A R D I. That's Vach Lombardi. And uh, hit the notification bell, man, because we're gonna be dropping film all week. Y'all hold it down for the Doski, Woski, and the Piski, Weeski, man. Salute.